Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can account for business expenses that you pay for with personal money by using manual journals in Xero. Now I use the Australian version of Xero's demo company in this video, but the principle is pretty similar all around the world. So you can get value out of this video, no matter where you are. And if you'd like to learn more about Xero, then check out the links to our courses in the description below. Okay, now in this video, we're going to learn how to reconcile or account for business expenses that you pay for with your personal money. Now, there's a few different ways you can do this in Xero, and in this video, we're going to do it by using a manual journal. And the journal posting is going to be done to either a director's loan account or an owner funds introduced account. And the one that you would use depends on the type of business that you run. So for example, if you've got a company, then you would most likely use the director's loan, or if you've got a sole tradership or a partnership, etc., you would most likely post to the owner funds introduced account. So no matter what you do, the goal is to have the expense go to the profit and loss. And that's a debit. If you're into your debits and credits, and you want the payment to go to the balance sheet, which is a credit. So after we've done the reconciliation, I'll show you how those end up on those two reports. Now for this particular exercise, the example that we're going to use is that we're going to say that we've purchased some stationery from a stationery supplier, and some of it is for business use and some of it is for personal use. But this is just one example. You can actually do this exercise for any kind of business expense that you pay for with your personal money. Okay, so let's go into zero now and we'll see how this is done. Okay, so over here in Xero's demo company, in order to post the manual journal, you can just go to accounting and manual journals and then just click on new journal. Okay, and this is where we're going to put in the details of our transaction. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to pretend that we've spent $22 of our personal money at a stationary shop. And most of those expenses are for the business, but we'll just say that that cardboard expense for $3 down there is personal. So what we want to do is we want to make sure the other $19 is included in our business accounts. So the way we're gonna do this is through a manual journal. So what I'll do is I'll just type the narration at the top first. Okay, so I've just put a narration in there for stationary paid for personally, and it's just selected a date as well when I press tab. So just make sure you put the date in, uh, that that's the same date as your invoice. So I'll just put that in there. Now this is not an auto reversing journal, so there's no need to put anything there. And also if you do want to attach a copy of the receipt, you can just go ahead, click on here and then either add it from your zero library or upload the file. If you've got a, um, uh, an, an image or a PDF or something like that, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to leave this ticked the default narration to journal line description, and then I'll just leave this one ticked as well. And then down here, I just need to do my tax selection. So I want this to be tax inclusive. So whatever amounts I type in, that's going to include GST. Okay. So if I go and click on this first description line down here, you can see that it's brought down the text from up here and that's happened because I've checked that box. If you want to type something different in down here, you can uncheck that box and just go ahead and type it or you can just type over it here anyway, if you have that box checked. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is go to the next box where we're going to choose the general ledger code. And here in the demo company, there is one for printing and stationery. So I'll just grab that one. Okay, so that's brought in the uh, GST tax rate there, which is correct. Obviously, if you have a different expense, go ahead and select the appropriate general ledger code. So if you bought something else, then you can choose whatever code um, is appropriate. Okay, so over here, because this is the expense line, we need to put the amount in as a debit and the amount is $19 out of the $22 on the receipt. So I'll just type in 19 and just hit tab like that. All right, so that's the first line in and you can see down here it's 
told us that our total is out by $19 because we haven't put in the credit side yet. So the other side of the journal, if we just click into here, you see it's brought that down as well into there. So this is where we're going to choose the account here, the general ledger account. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to come down into our liabilities and we're going to choose owner funds introduced. So that one there, and that's BAS excluded because it's outside of GST law. So what this means is that because we paid um, for the expense with a personal bank account, or even cash for that matter, we're not actually going to bring it into zero via any kind of um, bank account feed or anything like that. It's actually going to come into our business's books through this owner funds introduced account, which is like an owner's equity type account because we are quite literally introducing funds into the business. We're introducing $19 of our personal money into the business. So that's why we choose that there. And we're doing $19 because the total receipt or invoice was $22, but $3 of it was for personal use, not business use. And the remainder is $19. And you can see there that when I chose that general ledger code, zero went ahead and just populated the credit side here anyway. If you need to um, change that, you can go ahead and just click in and change it. If you've got like a, a multi-line journal for some reason, you can go ahead and make whatever changes you like. But whatever the case, once you've finished, you need to have your total debits and credits the same, which they are $19. You can see there that it's um, got the amount of GST in there. It's calculated that itself. So this is actually ready to go. So um, depending on your journal process, you can go ahead and post it right away. Or if you need to save it as a draft and have someone else approve it, you can go through that process. I'll just post it. And now that's done. So I'll just go to this posted tab and there it is there stationary paid for personally, 1st of September, $19. Okay. So I'll just show you a couple of things. If we go and duplicate the screen. We'll just go to the chart of accounts and we'll go to liabilities and just scroll down to the bottom and I'll just show you where that account is. The owner funds introduced account is here and there's another one for drawings there if you're taking money out of the business, but I'll just click into that one and I'll just show you how it's set up. So it's a current liability. It's called owner funds introduced. It's got the A there. You can change that to your name or you can get rid of it um, altogether. And then down here, make sure that's BAS excluded because there's no GST on it. And then down the bottom here, you should always make sure you've got this last um, checkbox ticked, enable payments to this account. It doesn't need to be checked for the manual journal, but it does need to be checked for other reasons if you're going to do expense claims, etc. So I'm just showing you this so you can see um, how the account is set up, particularly if you actually need to set one up in your zero file. Just cancel out of there. And we'll duplicate the screen again. Okay, now we're gonna run a profit and loss report. So uh, there it is there. Okay, so we'll run it for September because our journal was posted in September. And if we come down, we should see printing and stationery there. Okay, now this is a, a little bit funny. So you can see We've got our debit there, which is the $19 minus the GST. So that's, uh, I'll just go back in here. So that's that side of the journal posted 1727. So that's fine. It just shows on the P and L that there's actually a, um, a minus balance because it's, it's got this credit note in here as well, but that's not part of what we're doing. I'll just go back and show you. Just down there, it's got minus 1864. So that's just the balance of that account, but you can ignore the fact that that's a minus. We did see our $17 um, going in there properly. And I'll just duplicate the screen and show you the balance sheet. All right, we'll run it at today's date. And we'll scroll down a bit and we should find there, owner funds introduced, $19. 
and I'll just click in so we can see the transaction. So there it is, there's the $19 that we had uh, from our journal over here. So in the P&L, we've got the debit side has come through there, the 1727. We've got the $19 credit side that's come through on the balance sheet. And just as a reminder, it's come through down here and not out of the business bank account because we didn't pay for it out of the business bank account. So that's the debit and that's the credit and the balance of GST would have gone uh, to the GST balance sheet account. Okay, so that's how you can pay for something personally and then you can put a portion of what you've purchased um, through your business books by creating a manual journal where the debits go to the expense accounts and the credit goes to the owner funds introduced account.